Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another segment in Say It Out Loud, GG. Today, we are honored, honored, when I say honored, honored, to have this human being on our podcast today, Ondra. Can you pronounce your last name for me? <laughs> Ondra Nemchi. 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 Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> He's definitely a mindset coach. I mean, he's going to bring a lot of stuff to the table. So if you're watching this, the first thing I want you to do is subscribe and then leave comments, information. We're going to leave all his information, all his comments. So in any, any way or any method for you to get in touch with him, the first thing I want you to talk about and feel free, you're home, just feel free like you're home because this is diversity at its best. So I want to talk to you, how did we meet and who are you? Tell me a little bit about yourself. All right. So first of all, thank you, Gigi. I'm very happy to be here. And yeah, my name is Ondra. I'm originally from the Czech Republic. I am 23 years old now. And we met in New Jersey at an AMA speaking event where uh, Gigi was launching her book. So that was very awesome to witness and in, be a part of that in the room. And yeah, that's where we met and we reconnected very well. And now we are here. Yeah. Yeah. This is what networking looks like, guys. Definitely. And for those, I want you to, I want to get everyone a belly laugh right now. For those who didn't want, because I did mention, I'm like, um, I met this incredible individual. I said it in my um, Spanish podcast. I was like, I met this incredible individual and he was there, but... You know, when we got to schedule our, our meeting and I took out my planner, he's like, what's that? <laughs> so let's take this moment to introduce you to the what's that person. <laughs> that, that, that actually happened, yeah. Yeah, that actually happened. And he's like, no. He's like, we have our phones. <laughs> And I'm like, well, there goes my age, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I love that. I it. have never used like a planner in like a physical planner in my life. It's always in like a digital calendar. However, I do use a lot of um, journals that I write okay. in my and, and a lot of, you know, writing paper, on yeah. physical paper with pens. I love that, but when it comes to the planner, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> is that effective? It is effective because you know what? I could leave my phone anywhere. Well, mind you, my generation didn't start with phones. We started with beavers, okay. so we're yeah, not we're not yeah, even going to go point. that far back. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's for another podcast. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> But this is the famous, this is Ondra, this is the famous person that have, a lot of people have had a good laugh out of it. So I wanted people to know the person behind it. I said, you're hard, you're incredible, and you're definitely an inspiration at the age of 23. Let me just tell you, hands down, just by reading your bio and knowing that you have visited over 20 countries and you're just 23. Tell me how that, what is that like? How did it, how did you start that? Yeah, so... It first started kind of my like passion or my like curiosity and desire to travel started when I was about 16, 17 years old. So back before this, we would only travel with my family, like maybe once every two or three years and travel as in, uh, we go to the sea, stay in a hotel and stay at the, at the beach for a week. And that's basically it, right? That's a family vacation because we don't have the ocean. We don't have the sea in Czech Republic. So we would have to go to a different country. However, when I was 17, I got an opportunity to move abroad with school. It was called like an Erasmus program. Um, and it was like an internship. I was studying electronics and automation and stuff like this. And I got an opportunity to move to Budapest, which is in Hungary. And we lived there for three weeks and we went, we went to work there and we just, you know, had some like cultural experiences. And back before that, I wasn't really interested in living in different places. I was just like, oh, I would just stay here. Why would I go anywhere else? And I, I was also very distant and resistant to being in bigger cities 
because I'm from a small, pretty small town. I was like, I, I like it here. And it's not too crowded. Why would I want to go to a crowded place? And then I moved to Budapest, which is the capital city of Hungary. It's not too big, but it's, you know, a lot bigger than my town. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. It was amazing. And I had one of some of the best three weeks of my life up until that point. And after that, I was like, how can I do like more of this? How can I? It's, I didn't know this was a thing like, that I can like move abroad and maybe work there or do something. And so the summer after that, um, coincidentally kind of happened. One of my friends who was with me in Budapest, um, he had a friend or like a family friend who had a company in Germany and he invited us to go work for him for the summer, like a summer job. So then the same year I went to work in Germany as well for a month. And I love that as well. And that's what it, where it kind of started. I was like, how can I get myself into different countries? How can I go work in different countries? And because I was curious about it, I was looking for it. That's when I kind of got introduced into the digital nomad spaces and people making money online and having businesses or having the remote jobs. And I was like, that sounds like the, the most wonderful, amazing thing. You have the freedom, you have all this. Mm -hmm. How can I do that? I definitely want to do that. I'm going to do my best to kind of find out what can I do and become a digital nomad. And I've been doing that for the past almost two years now. And that's how I got to all these 20 countries uh, by working online and traveling at the same time. And and traveling at the same time. So that that's a sense of freedom that you feel. And yes. Okay. So in your, in your bio, you also talk about overcoming depression and social anxiety. What does that look like for you? Yes. So this is something that started way before my mm-hmm. desire and my curiosity for travel and exploring the world and having more freedom. Um, well, actually it is related to freedom, but more of a like mental freedom, you know, not mm-hmm. physical freedom. I, I can go there. I can go there, but mental freedom of being trapped under all this anxiety and this heaviness of depression. And I also say that I overcame uh, social anxiety and depression without therapy or medication. Yes. And that's true. So I am once, once again, I'm from a small town in the East of Czech Republic. So the mindset over there is mental health issues don't exist. Just get over it. You don't need to talk to anybody. You don't need any, any, any drugs, any of this, just figure it out, kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, suck it up in a way. And of course that's not really effective. We know that now, Mm -hmm. but for me, in my case, I'm lucky that it kind of worked because I was like, okay, well, this is not going to help me. My parents aren't going to help me. School isn't going to help me. It wasn't like there was, it seemed like nobody was interested to help me. And I finally kind of changed. I was like, okay, I have to help myself then. And to Mm -hmm. give you a little bit more context as well, I was uh, getting bullied in school. I was very shy. I was a small kid. I I couldn't really speak. I I almost stutter here and there. And I couldn't express myself and basically at all. I couldn't read in front of the class. Every time I would call on to read, I would like, uh, um, speaking in front of the class was almost impossible and then even just connecting with with people around me was incredibly difficult and on top of that i would get bullied right so school Mm -hmm. wasn't a great experience for me as a kid and then uh home my parents would fight every every time every basically every day mostly about money but also about other things as well and so both of my experiences as a kid, school and home, weren't really that great. And that's what kind of fueled all this uh, social anxiety more or this anxiety more and all this depression more and just completely started hating my life. And when I was around 13 years old, that's when it kind of snapped. That's where like it was at the peak. And, and I decided like, I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. And also, I think coincidentally, I don't remember how, but I came across videos of random acts of kindness. And I just saw people, even if it was helping somebody across the street or giving a homeless Mm -hmm. person $10 or, you know, whatever it was, saving animals or just helping each other or somebody somebody did something very nice for their grandma. And I would just watch these videos for hours and hours. 
back when I first discovered it. And I would like cry my eyes out, you know, on my bed. I would be like, like tears of joy and hope, you know, like this wasn't mm-hmm. sad tears anymore. But it was tears and joy and hope. Like, and it showed me that there are good people out there in the world, that there mm-hmm. are amazing people out there in the world. And it helped me make the decision, make the decision that I'm going to find these people and I'm going to become like one of these people so they want to hang out with me right yeah <laughs> and and so now finally i was at a place where i not only knew what i don't didn't want to be like i didn't want to be like my parents they would fight all the time and they were poor all the time and would, created a home a, a lot of mess i didn't want to be like the people in school because a lot of them were bullies and then the other ones didn't do anything about it mm-hmm. right so i didn't want to be like that i didn't want to be like that and then finally I saw like a role model, like I want to be like that. Like I want to be one of these people. Mm-hmm. And after that, I Googled how to be happy. I Googled how to talk to people. I Googled how to be confident. And I started doing my own research, right? Help myself because I still didn't know what I was doing. So I had to start learning and doing my own research. And then that helped a lot as well. And I started changing my habits. So from the age of around 13 to 15, these two years have been, you know, my main goal was to overcome my social anxiety because I knew that a lot of my social anxiety and not being able to speak to other people and connect with other people created a lot of my depression as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And why I hated my life and why I hated myself. So if I could overcome social anxiety, then I could, you know, become so much happier and all this. And that turned out to be true. So my main goal was to just, okay, I'm going to find a way to overcome my social anxiety. And for the far, first two years, it wasn't related to speaking to people basically at all. Or uh, it wasn't related to getting out there in the world. It was related to getting in here and changing my habits and looking into my beliefs and looking into why I feel this way and what's going on inside me, what's going on inside my head. And I changed my habits more specifically. I did one thing that I, I'm so happy I did. It was super hard, but I started waking up at 5 a.m. before school and going for a run in the mornings. And, and nowadays I look back and I call this my confidence building habit because it was something that was very hard, yeah. very difficult, but mm-hmm. it made me feel stronger both physically and it made me feel stronger mentally, which are like two key components Mm -hmm, of of any confidence building habits that you want to do but also number three it made me made me feel like i'm a badass you know (laughs) so now i could go to school i wasn't that shy weird kid anymore but i was the i was the badass who's waking up at 5 a.m and going for a run right so it may it meant a lot to me as in like that so that was like the extra of it like wow like i'm a badass now right (laughs) so it it gave me so much more confidence as well and then eventually that helped me stand up to my bullies and will never remember, never forget the moment where like I slapped my bully back and he was just like. The surprise on their face. The, okay. Okay. Uh, and then nobody ever touched me or nobody ever did anything to me ever since. Right. No. Mm-hmm. So I was like, whoa, I could have done that the whole time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so then um, you were thinking like, yeah, why did yeah. I didn't think? But yeah. it was when you was ready. And let me tell you, I have to just applaud you and acknowledge that at a very young age, you are self-aware. And I mean, that takes a lot, especially coming from a person, you know, that I'm in my 40s. So self-awareness didn't come to me probably in my 30s. So the fact that at the age of 13, you pinpointed exactly what you didn't want to be, like you wasn't influenced um, by your parents, influenced by these bullies, you kind of recognize and say, well, that's what I don't want to be. And that's what I don't want to be. And this is what I'm not going to do. And the fact that you identify your feelings and say, this is not, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I mean, you're talking to the world right now, this world where um, the suicidal rate is so high, especially in teens life and in young adults because of that, because they do come from a background where their parents are, you know, it's a negative and toxic relationship where 
<laughs> where you know social di- uh, bullying and 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 all this negative stuff comes in and the fact that you could speak on it as a person that went through that as a person that acknowledged that and said no I am going to change like this is not what I'm going to do and you're living proof like you know once again I mean I have to acknowledge that we so I celebrate you at this moment just for for that itself Thank tell you. me tell me what is it that you focus on now that you have gone through all that um you do mindset um coaching so t- yeah. talk about a little bit about what that looks like yes so i help with people i have people with social anxiety and mm-hmm. i also help people overcome spe- like it's specifically the imposter syndrome but it's basically the i don't feel good enough to do this and when mm-hmm. it comes to starting uh businesses or creative projects um because i absolutely love creative people and they are mm-hmm. most amazing artists and creatives and singers and all this um they are amazing human beings so uh, mm-hmm. but a lot of them struggle with this imposter syndrome i'm not good enough which is actually very related to social anxiety itself as well um mm-hmm. so i i focus on this group of people uh, to help them get their messages out there get their visions out there and so i think first well, let me start with this so the best way how can, how i can illustrate um mm-hmm. is i think with a story of one of my clients so um i met uh, his nickname is crash his real name is richard but i met him about 8 months ago and when i first met him he uh, had such bad anxiety such bad social anxiety that he couldn't even go to work anymore so he ho- he was on mental health leave um okay. and he he would just break down when he would even go to work to talk to her, the coworkers and he tried therapy he tried antidepressants he tried anxiety medication none of it really really worked and it you know, ended up over the like the past, I think he said like two or three years before I met him, he was trying all these different things and it just ended up him making in the long run only mm-hmm. worse. Right. And when I first started working with him, um, we did some reframing about his, about his beliefs about anxiety and uh, his diagnosis and the labels that they slapped on him. Mm -hmm. So we reframed that in a way and we took the power away from the labels and and he started improving. We changed his habits, which we created a vision for him, how he wanted to be within a couple of weeks, within a couple of months, he was back to work within a couple of weeks, he was back to work. And within a couple of months, he was saying, I'm happier, happier than I've ever been before. And I, I can communicate a lot better. I can speak to people a lot better. And he was more confident than he said uh, than he said he's ever been before, and it was more authentic as well. Like he couldn't didn't have to pretend it anymore, mm-hmm. right? He didn't have to play. It was really coming from him. And then now it's been ab- about eight months, and he started a business where he was teaching dance to to people as a um, as a way to help them with movement and and mm-hmm. some somewhat of a mental health. And then he decided i don't really want to do that now maybe later in life but you know starting at this kind mm-hmm. of physical business isn't really fitting in my life right now um, so he started a new project called stand out happy and he's creating content and he's right now traveling around the uk he's meeting up with different oh, people and, awesome. and creating like a comedy content and mm-hmm. helping people you know just laugh and uh, be happier and he talks about mental health and happiness and, and spreads the the message more so you know, having witnessing to take somebody and, and to, of course, he did a lot of the work, right? Like mm-hmm. I was there to guide him and support him. Exactly. And, 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 and throughout all this journey and like give him some pointers and help him reframe some of these beliefs and some of the things that, you know, p- other people slapped on him, mm-hmm. these labels, especially. Um, so I helped him with that, but he did most of the work of like the, the heavy lifting of, you know, changing your habits and, and mm-hmm. putting in, going outside of your comfort zone to actually go this so you can overcome it um and it was really it it's really been amazing to witness his transformation over the past um eight months and now he comes to my open mic nights op- to my open mic events and he performs like a banana dance man b- <laughs> banana dances and he does comedy for us and and you can see how he's really having a good time in life and he's 
excited and about the project. That's awesome. That's such an amazing thing. And just in case you didn't know, scientifically proven that you know you that you extend more years when you laugh. You know when you're having a laugh. It's scientifically proven, yeah. guys. So just in case, so he's doing an incredible, amazing thing. And thank you. You were his tools. That's what I say. You're the tool. You know, he did the work. You just gave him the tools. And sometimes that's what people need. And I'm so grateful and happy to hear that someone, you know, that you, people have you out there. You know, I want to know how people could reach you and 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 how they could look you up for anybody that's watching and, and looking for more information about yourself. The best two ways to find me and contact me are Facebook and Instagram. But mm -hmm. if you go to one of those, whatever, whichever one you prefer, that's great. You can, um, if you're a little bit too shy, sometimes people can tend to be a little bit too shy and want to learn a little bit more. Just go through my content, you know, uh, read through what I write, look at the videos that I post. And when you feel more comfortable or even when you don't feel so comfortable and it's still uncomfortable, but you're going to do it anyway, that's where the growth is. You can send me a message and then we can talk about your specific situation and see if I can personally help you or if I know somebody else who might be a better fit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, once again, you could find them on Facebook and on Instagram. So definitely we'll link everything below on the comment session or the description session. But I do have one, one thing that I want you to leave um, at this podcast and leave us today. So you have an audience right now that is watching you. That is watching Ondra. 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 Te digo. <laughs> and it comes like that Ondra. That's, that's the Spanish in me. Ondra. <laughs> yeah. So what is your message to anyone out there that want to um, become an entrepreneur, wants to become uh, free from from that um, prisoner mindset, right? That prisoner to say, no, this is my world, right? This is this is where I live, so this is only me. This is there's no more out there. So I want you to speak to that audience and and tell them, you know, would would you as a 23 year old entrepreneur that has visited over 20 countries, you know, what do you tell them? Well, what do you want to say to them? If you want to do it, it will never be super easy. It will never feel like this is the this is the perfect time. This is where it, this is where it is. It, it will never come. Don't wait for it. It will always be uncomfortable. There will always be people who tell you you're throwing your life away. This is never going to work. Um, what are you doing? You're not good enough to do this. And not only other people, there will always also be your brain telling you this. It will be also in your head. Oh no, I'm not good enough yet. I'm not ready yet. So if you want to wait, have specific, very, very specific conditions of when you're going to make the jump. And if you, if you don't have very specific conditions, then your brain will always be like, no, I need to get this one more thing. I need to get this one more thing. I need to get this one more thing. And then you will end up, you know, being 35, 40. And then looking back like, wow, I wish I have done. I wish I had done that before. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, always tell people this. It feels like you are your brain feels like it's choosing between the comfort of staying where you are or the discomfort of going out there and trying something new. But that's an illusion. So what is actually happening when you zoom out a little bit, you are choosing between the discomfort of staying the same mm -hmm. or the discomfort of growing and doing something new. I will give you an example of a, of the of going to the gym, right? Like cuz that's an easy easy analogy to understand. If you are sitting here and you're thinking about, should I go to the gym or should I not go to the gym? Your brain thinks, oh, it's comfortable to be here and it's uncomfortable to, to, uncomfortable to go to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, okay, change the perspective a little bit. If you stay here, you're, you're going to have to deal with the discomfort of the regret of not going, of the discomfort of being weak, of the discomfort of not looking like you want to look like, of the discomfort of not being in your best shape that you could be. That's the discomfort that you're choosing if you choose mm -hmm. to stay here or the discomfort of going to the gym and putting in the workout 
that's also the discomfort, right? So you're, you always are choosing between the discomfort of, of being here or the discomfort of being here. Mm -hmm. And the question is, which one, which discomfort is better for you? Like, which do you actually want to deal with? If yes. you want to deal with the discomfort of not being in the best shape that you could be, great, stay at home. No, like no judgment there, right? It, it's you decide. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to deal with the discomfort of the, of lifting the weights so that you can become in the, uh, be in the best shape of your life, that's great. And the same thing will apply for entrepreneurship or becoming a digital nomad or for starting your own project. It's like, it's, it's not the, the comfort of not putting yourself out there and not trying something new. It's the discomfort of staying same and having the regrets and having staying maybe trapped in, you know, whatever life you have now. And you're thinking mm -hmm. about escaping it. You want to have more freedom. You want to have more autonomy. You want to make more money. You want to be in, independent. You want to go visit the countries, right? So you feel stuck here. So that's the discomfort that you're choosing if you're not starting your projects, if you're not um, going out there and, and learning and pr pursuing it. Yeah, let's drop the mic. <laughs> that was and and besides besides guys, he's he's also an international speaker, by the way. That's why he could drop the mic right now. <laughs> and you're also an author. Talk about your book, or I am. So my book, it's it's a very short. Uh, guide. It's called the guide to overcome social anxiety. It's like the three main key principles that there's also like a little bit of my story. You can buy it on Amazon. And um, I also collaborated on a different book called the giving book with about 25 other authors. So it was a great collaboration. And uh, that book became a bestseller. So I was very blessed oh, and very yes. grateful to uh, get invited with, with yeah. other authors who've been, you know, writing books for a longer time to be yeah. a part of what they've created and contribute in, in a small way. And, um, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I celebrate you. I congratulate you. Keep doing what you do best. Keep succeeding. Thank you for being part of Say It Out Loud, Gigi. Thank you for the invite. you know, accepting the invitation. And hopefully this is, yeah, this is our first not our last, because I'm going to keep, you know, checking up on you and any collaborations that we could do to uplift and all that. And before I leave, I wanted to just um, ask you one more question. Have you ever thought about um, being or or talking in the school district I for have. colleges? I okay. have, yeah. Okay. I think, I think you'll be a perfect fit for that, especially, you know, your mindset. And once, once again, a mindset go a coach, that's what you are. Your mindset is incredible. So I, I applaud you. Thank you for being in Say It Out Loud, Gigi. Once again, uh, their information and the link will be below. So share, like, subscribe, and let's say bye, Andra. Bye everybody.